Thank you. Um, we all saw the horrific events that took place on June the 14th at Grenfell Tower. Now, I've been a firefighter based at Chelsea Fire Station for the past 11 years. And in my whole career, I've never seen anything like it. And inshallah, I will never see anything like it again. I've spoken to my colleagues who have been in for 30 years. And they say the same. This is something that like they've never seen before. It's completely, was completely unprecedented. That fire on that night was like something none of us have ever seen again. Fires do not spread like that. And we know that something went seriously wrong. Now, I've spoken to my colleagues from Chelsea Fire Station on the Red Watch who did attend Grenfell. And they are absolutely heartbroken at what they saw and had to deal with. I speak to my colleagues who literally had to make the decision about who they would save and who they would leave on the stairs to die. I've spoken to control workers who were on the end of the phone speaking to families as they passed away on the end of the phone call. These people will never get over what they experienced on that night. Now we know that there is a public inquiry that is started and hopefully we will find some answers. But what we do know and what we believe is that austerity caused that fire. <laughs> Had that building not been a social housing building, we know that there wouldn't have been so many failures. Now, in 2013, an inquiry took place after a deadly fire took um, place at a building called Larkinall House. Now, at that inquiry, some recommendations were made. Those recommendations included sprinklers on all buildings of a certain height and social housing buildings, and there was also recommendations on cladding. Now, bearing in mind this was a public inquiry, the government said they would accept those recommendations and implement them. Instead, they completely ignored them. So why did Grenfell have flammable cladding and no sprinklers and only one dry riser? Because it was social housing and the decision makers don't care about social housing tenants. And why did the residents' concerns about the cladding before the fire, why were they ignored? Simple, because they're social housing tenants and the decision makers don't care about social housing tenants. Those victims at Grenfell Tower didn't stand a chance. The minute rich people in Kensington and Chelsea decided that they no longer, no longer wanted to look at an ugly building, those tenants' fates were sealed. Now my union, the Fire Brigade Union, are holding our own investigation as well as being involved as core participants in the public inquiry. We will ensure that our members who attended that fire are supported, but we will also keep close contact with the residents at Grenfell and continue to support them. And we will ensure that those questions that need answered are answered. And we will not stop fighting as a union until we get justice for every single one of those victims. Grenfell, as horrific as it was, unfortunately was a disaster waiting to happen. Over the last decade, we've seen the public sector in this country absolutely savaged, and that includes the fire brigade. In London alone, in the last three years, we've seen the London Fire Brigade, thanks to our now Foreign Secretary, former Mayor Boris Johnson, we've seen 10 fire stations closed, we've seen 29 fire engines taken away from frontline service, and we've seen over a thousand firefighter job losses. We've seen one third of fire inspectors cut nationally in this country. Now, that it would have been those fire inspectors who would have been the people who would have inspected Grenfell and made recommendations. And they no longer exist anymore because of this government. In London, we've seen response times up by a third. So if any of you in this room are unfortunate enough to be a victim of a fire, you would expect your fire engine to get to you within six minutes. We're now seeing that people are waiting up to 13, 14, 15 minutes. Tragically, we've seen fire deaths increase in the last 18 months by 20%, and that's before Grenfell. As I've mentioned, I'm based at Chelsea Fire Station, and I see the effects of social cleansing every day. When I go out to housing estates and I roll up to fit a smoke alarm or just speak to the residents, and you'll come across Porsches and Mercedes, and you think, well, this 
probably doesn't belong to a social housing tenant. And what you see is decades of these social houses being sold to tenants who then sell them, out, um, sell them on and then sell them on again. So what we're seeing is social housing tenants being pushed out of the borough and ultimately being pushed out of London, which is now what we're seeing with the tenants of Grenfell. I've recently heard that Kensington and Chelsea Council, this will be my final point, I think I'm running out of time. I've recently heard that Kensington and Chelsea Council are trying to cover up um, the building of Grenfell by putting scaffolding up and then covering it up and wrapping. And their reason is because people don't like looking at it anymore. Now, I completely disagree with that. I'm sure, like many of you, I've been at the site many times or driven past it. And every time you see that building, it's absolutely breathtaking. It's heartbreaking, but it's breathtaking. But that building, as it stands there today in West London, is a symbol of this country's failures. It's a symbol of how this country treats its social housing tenants. And I think every politician, every MP, should be dragged from the House of Commons and made to look at that building and made to see and understand. <laughs> that the decisions they made have led to what took place on the 14th of June. Thank you. Yes.